at you guys with some more black history every day. Today we'll be going back to March 5th, 1770. Christmas Addicts is killed in the Boston Massacre, marking the start of the, Re the American Revolution. Now there isn't a lot of information on Chris Christmas Addicts. Um, it's like wasn't very well documented. And apparently he was an escaped slave. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. Um, like I said, this is gonna be kind of rather short because there's not a whole lot of information on Christmas Addicts. But what information there is, I will put links into the description box so you guys, as usual, can do your own independent research if you wanna find out little details that may not have made the cut for this video. So I'll begin. Christmas Addicts. Um, rumored to be born 1723, doesn't give a month or a day, and died March 5th, 1770. Was the first person killed in the Boston Massacre in Boston, Massachusetts, and is widely considered to be the first American casualty in the American Revolutionary War. Now, right offhand, I want to say that um, the Revolutionary War didn't start until 1775. The Revolutionary War didn't start in 1770. Now, that incident with the Boston Massacre is um, one of maybe several events that led up to the uh, Revolutionary War. One of those other ev uh, uh, events being the Boston Tea Party, right? So let's just be clear on the actual history. The Revolutionary War did not begin in 1770, okay? Aside from the event of his death, along with Samuel Gray, James Caldwell, little is known for certain about addicts. He was probably a Native, Native American slave or freeman, merchant seaman and dock worker of Wampanoag and African descent. Some circum, circumstantial evidence suggests his father may have been Prince Younger, an African born slave and his mother, Nanny Peter Atkins. Peter Atticks, sorry, a Nantic Native American. Despite the lack of clarity, Attics became an icon of the anti-slavery movement in the mid 19th century. He was held up as the first martyr of the American Revolution, while the others killed were largely ignored. In the 1850s, as the, abolish, as the abolitionist movement gained momentum in Boston, Supporters lauded Attics as an African-American who played a heroic role in the history of the United States. Apparently, young Attics developed a longing for freedom at an early age. According to the Black presence in the era of the American Revolution, historians believe that an adv adv I'm sorry, adver advertisement or advertisement, always read it as advertisement, placed in the Boston Gazette on October 2nd, 1750, referred to him, quote, ran away from his master, William Brown, from Framingham on 30th of September. Last, a mulatto fellow, about 27 years of age, named Crispus, spelled C-R-I-S-P-A-S, six feet, two inches high, short curled hair, his knees nearer together than common, head and had on a light-colored bearskin coat, end quote. Born into slavery, Christmas Attucks was believed to be the son of Prince Younger, a slave shipped to America from Africa, and Nancy Attucks. See, this is a little bit different from before. Na Nanny Peter Attucks. And this, but this is, so I get the information from different sites, and I read off the information from the different sites. So sometimes the information isn't going to be consistent with within the parameters of the uh, the script that I'm reading from but I just I do that also to give you guys um, a sense of how different people record the different information how history is usually usually isn't based off of any truth but more or less factual evidence that can be compiled not necessarily what actually happened um, but anyway, continuing on, little was known about Attic's life or his family 
who reputedly resided in Framingham, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. What has been pieced together paints a picture of a young man who showed an early skill for buying and trading goods. He seemed unafraid of the consequences for escaping the bonds of slavery. Historians have, in fact, theorized that Attucks was the focus of an advertisement in any 1750 edition of the Boston, Boston Gazette. Right. Now, here's what, what wasn't read. A white landowner offered to pay 10 pounds for the return of the young runaway slave. Historians disagree on whether Christopher Attucks was a free man or escaped slave, but most agree that he was of Wampanoag and African descent. Two major sources of eyewitness testimony about the Boston Massacre, both published in 1770, did not refer to Attucks as a black nor as a Negro. It appeared that Bostonians of European descent viewed him as being of mixed ethnicity. According to a contemporary account in the Pennsylvania Gazette, Philadelphia, he was a mulatto man named Crispus Attucks who was born in Framingham but lately belonged to New Providence and was here in order to go to go for North Carolina, end quote. Because of his mixed heritage, his story is also significant for Native Americans. And again, this is a different rendi rendition or interpretation of, of that era or that time, because we know that, that people of color were treated poorly. And if you were, whether you were mixed with white, Asian, or Indian, if you were half black, you were treated as such. On top of the fact that this man had escaped from slavery. So, more than likely, he was, and he was a wanted man. Let's see. As British control over the colonies tightened, tensions escalated between the colonists and British soldiers. Attucks was one of those directly affected by the worst of the situation. Seamen like Attucks constantly lived with the threat they could be forced into the British Navy. While back on land, British soldiers regularly took part-time work away from colonists. Now, I find that I find that uh, dynamic very uh, very intriguing because here we have the uh, the, the European co colonists in colonial America not liking, you know, the uh, basically the uh, the um, the attention from the British soldiers. They didn't like the British being in control of the land. They didn't like the British lording over them. And basically, in effect, you know, controlling their movements and their actions. Now, in contrast to that, we have the Native Americans and the Africans who were being subjugated by the very European colonists who aren't very appreciative of the British attention that they're getting from those soldiers and the British lording their power over them. I just find it hard to actually have any empathy for Europeans being um, controlled by the British whilst they did everything that they could to native peoples and African people in order to gain control of this land that they stole from the native population. But continuing on, in the fall of 1768, British soldiers were sent to Boston in an attempt to control growing colonial unrest, which had led to a spat of attacks on local officials following the introduction of the Stamp Act and the subsequent Town Townsend Act. Radical Whigs, spelled W-H-I-G-S, had coordinated waterfront mobs against the authorities. The presence of troops, instead of reducing tensions, served to further inflame them. After dusk on March 5, 1770, a crowd of colonists confronted a sentry who had chastised a boy for complaining that an officer did not pay barber bill. Both townspeople and a company of British soldiers of the 29th Regiment of Foot gathered. The colonists threw snowballs and debris at the soldiers. Attics and a group of men with Attic's approach 
with addicts approached uh, the uh, old state house armed with clubs. A soldier was struck with a piece of wood, an act some witnesses claim was done by addicts. Other witnesses stated that addicts was leaning upon a stick when the soldiers opened fire. Now listen, listen. By this time in, in 1770, look, the, 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 the role that black people would have played in this country was pretty obvious. Even though they were British soldiers, I don't see a black man in this time, in this period of time, initiating any incident like that. Surrounded by white people, mind you. Because I don't hear, you don't really have any information recorded saying that he was surrounded by other black people. Because the, the other guys that, that were killed during the Boston, Boston massacre with him were all white guys. Now, we'll continue we on. Five Americans were killed and six were wounded in what came to be called the Boston Massacre. Addicts was the first one killed. He took two bullets in the chest. Rope maker Samuel Gray, a sailor and sailor, James Cadwell, also died in the incident. Samuel, Samuel Maverick, a 17-year-old joiner's apprentice, died the next day. Irish leather worker Patrick Carr died nine days later. Attic's body was carried to Fanwell Hall, where it lay in state until Thursday, March 8th, when he and the other victims were buried together. John Adams successfully defended most of the act, most of the accused British soldiers against the charge of murder. Two of the soldiers were found guilty of manslaughter. Faced with the prospect of hanging, the soldiers pleaded, I'm sorry, pleaded benefit of clergy and were instead branded on their thumbs. In his argument, Adams called the crowd a motley rabble of saucy boys, Negroes and mulattoes, Irish teagues and outlandish jack tars. Wow. Um, that's seemingly 18th century American jargon. I'm not even going to begin to try and translate any of that for you. So, I'm going to keep moving. In particular, he charged addicts with having undertaken to have, I'm sorry, in particular, he charged addicts with, quote, undertaken to be the hero of the night, end quote, and with having precipitated a conflict by his, quote unquote, mad behavior. See, now, that's more typical of what I would think that Europeans would say about a black person who who is charged with leading this rebel. Because I can only assume that they that people place the fact that he led this uh, mob of uh, five rebels, four or five rebels uh, to their deaths with this con in this conflict with British soldiers because it looks better if it's the black guy that started it versus the white guy. Which is probably why these, um, these British soldiers were defended by future president, John Adams, he also was one of the founding fathers as well. But in any event, that's irrespective of the uh, rest of the conversation. In any event, John Adams still represented the British soldiers because he is of British descent himself, so I can understand that. But to, but to throw the black guy under the bus is basically the point that I'm getting at. And maybe that's why those British soldiers got off with pretty much just a slap on the wrist for killing them because they're basically saying that if it wasn't for Christmas addicts, the other guys involved, the Europeans, would not have been murdered. But that's just my take on it. Two years later, the United States founding father Samuel Adams, cousin of John Adams, named the event the Boston Massacre and helped ensure that it would not be forgotten. Boston artist Henry Pelham, half-brother of celebrated portrait painter John Singleton Copley created an image of the event. Paul Revere made a copy from which prints were made and distributed. Some copies of the print show a dark-skinned man with chest wounds, presumably representing Christmas addicts. Other copies of the print show no difference in the skin tones of the victims. Christmas Addicts Day was inaugurated by black abolitionists in 1858. And in 1888, the Christmas Addicts Monument was erected on the Boston Common 
despite the opposition of the Massachusetts Historical Society and the New England Historical, I'm sorry, his, I'm sorry Historic Genealogical Society, which regarded Attucks as a villain. The debate, notwithstanding, Attucks immortalized as the first to defy, the first to die, has been lauded as a true martyr, the first to pour out his blood as a is a precious libation on the altar of a people's right. End quote. Sorry for that. Um, now, uh, I don't really, there's not a lot, like I said, there's not a lot of information on Christmas addicts, so there's not really a lot for me to get into other than, you know, mostly filling the time, um, giving my own opinion on uh, certain, certain aspects of his life. But there isn't a lot of information on Christmas addicts. Um, you guys feel free to make up your own minds about what you believe about Christmas addicts and the life of Christmas addicts. And if you feel as though he was a hero, if you feel as though um, his actions actually meant something in the long run. Because remember, again, the, the Revolutionary War, the War of Independence, didn't start until 1775. That was just one incident that is charged with, which, with, being, I guess, a somewhat of a catalyst for the actual um, war itself, which happened five years after the fact. So, this is knowledge of self-determination. Um, links will be in the description box if you guys want to do more research on Christmas Addicts yourselves. Like, learn, and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace.